blessings of God be upon uh, all of you. Uh, thank you for having us here and hosting this so far. Uh, it's an honor to be here. I'm actually not going to take too much of your time. Um, I, uh, I've noticed that usually when um, there's a Muslim speaker, people have a lot of questions. Uh, so maybe I'll actually open it up for some Q&A in, in a minute or so. You can ask me whatever you want about Islam. It doesn't have to be about fasting. Uh, but fasting is one of the uh, pillars of Islam. So there's a famous hadith. Hadith is a saying of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And there's different grades of these hadith. Some are strong, some are weak, some are fabricated. Uh, this particular hadith tends to be strong. Where he said, Dunya islamu ala khams, to quote him directly. Uh, Islam is built on five, right? By five he meant the pillars. So the first pillar is called the Shahada, in Arabic, means witnessing. Uh, so witnessing that there's only one God, right? And Muslims call this God Allah. And Allah is not a foreign God. Um, according to the Quran, Allah is the God of Abraham. Uh, Allah is the God of Moses. Allah is the God of Jesus. And these prophets are mentioned in the text of the Quran itself, right? So Allah is not some, you know, Arab God or, you know, the God of the uh, Middle Easterners or something like that. He's the God of Abraham, right? So Shahada is to witness that he is the only one God. And when I say he is the only one God, that's, again, not to say that God is masculine or male, but uh, every word in Arabic is assigned a gender by the linguist. Uh, so sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a natural gender. Sometimes the linguist will assign what's known as a lexical gender to the word. So for example, the word, the, the, the word for sun, S-U-N in Arabic is shams. But the linguist way back in the day decided that the sun is feminine and the moon is masculine. Nobody really knows why that is. Maybe there's someone here that studied the history or the etymology of Arabic uh, words. Uh, but the word Allah in Arabic is masculine lexically. So we refer to him as him. That there's no God but him, and that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who Muslims believe to be the last uh, in a long line of prophets, starting with Adam, uh, and including names like, like we said, Abraham, even Noah, even David and Solomon are seen as prophets. Uh, Elijah, um, and there is a minority opinion that there are several female prophets, including the wife of Pharaoh, named Asya, whose uh, story is not told as far as I know in Jewish sources, um, uh, as well as Sarah, and Hagar, and Mary, who is the mother of Jesus, uh, who is mentioned in the Quran as well. So the Shahada is similar to maybe the Shema in, in its importance, right? Now this is sort of the essence of uh, Islamic confession. And then the second pillar is known as Salah, uh, which, believe it or not, has an etymology, a common etymology with Tafillah in Hebrew, which means prayer. So Muslims, uh, well, they should at least, pray five times a day, at different times, right? Um, and uh, you know, these prayers take a few minutes. When somebody converts to Islam, it's kind of burdensome. I have to pray again, I just prayed three hours ago. Right? But then as you age <laughs> and get wiser, these things become much easier. Uh, so they take a few minutes, every few hours. Uh, and then there's something called zakah, which is also known as sadaqa or swataqa in, in Hebrew, it's related to sadiq, uh, which has a root meaning of to purify something. So zakah or sadaqa is a uh, uh, a poor due. Muslims, if there's excess wealth, and this is only for people that can't afford that, 
two and a half percent of their excess wealth will go to the uh, less fortunate or to the poor. And then we have the fourth pillar, which is called uh, Hajj, or Hajj in Hebrew, or if you live in Egypt, it's also called Hajj, because the, the jim and uh, the letter jim in Arabic, uh, he, in the Egyptian dialect is pronounced like an email. So they'll say like, uh, Michael Gordon, instead of Michael Jordan. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, again, this is for Muslims that can afford to do so, they'll make a pilgrimage to Mecca. Once a year is the obligation, if you can afford to do so. And then there's something called the Umrah, which is the lesser pilgrimage. And then finally, the fifth pillar is called Som, which is exactly the same word in Hebrew, Som in fasting, also known as Siyam in the Quran. The Quran says, Kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladina ni qablikum. The Quran says to the Muslims at large that fasting is prescribed upon you just as it was prescribed upon those before you. And the exegetes here uh, clarify and say, before you means ahli kitab, the people of the Bible, or the people of the book, Jews and Christians. Right. And then, so the, the purpose of fasting is given. So there's an axiom amongst the scholars of Islam that the merit of something is known by its objective. So the objective of fasting, according to the Quran, is in order for you to be people of God consciousness. The word in Arabic is taqwa, which is very, very difficult to translate. Uh, sometimes it's translated as fear of God, in order for you to fear God, uh, which is the beginning of all wisdom, according to the Bible. Sometimes it's translated as um, in order for you to uh, repel evil, to guard against evil. Right? Uh, in pre-Islamic times, the word taqwa actually meant a shield, something to block the blow of a sword. Right? So, Probably the best translation is to be conscious of God. So when Muslims are fasting, when anyone's fasting, in theory, uh, they should, there should be a sort of focus on the inward, right? You're not eating, you're not drinking, there's no marital relations in the daytime, according to a Muslim's fast, in order to, for one to focus on God completely. And how does one focus on God? By remembering God and by guarding one's limbs. And this is something that a Muslim is supposed to be doing all throughout the year, by the way. So Ramadan is really more like a training program to set the stage for the rest of the year. And it sort of wanes through the course of the year. It shouldn't, but it tends to. And then Ramadan, again, you enter into this training program. We're not, we're not looking at things that are forbidden. So it's not just a fast of the stomach. Right? There's a hadith of the Prophet where he said, there are several people, it's a rhetorical question, how many fasters are there that get nothing from their fast except hunger and thirst? Meaning that they're missing the point of the fast. The point of the fast is to really master the self. Right? To master the self. There's a hadith of the Prophet, and there is some weakness of this hadith. Uh, but generally, the, the scholars of Islam will quote it uh, because they would say, they would argue that the meaning of the hadith is true, even though its chain of transmission may have some weakness. Anyway, it's reported that the Prophet said, Man arif man arafa nafsa arafa rabba. Uh, the translation is, whoever knows himself knows his Lord. Right? So the word in Arabic here, arafa, or ma'rifa, really means to recognize, recognition. Whoever recognizes himself will, will recognize his Lord. So one of the meanings here, according to the scholars of this hadith, is that if you recognize your origin as God's creation, as God's beloved creation, you will come to know that God is the beloved. Another shade of meaning of this tradition is that if you master yourself, then you'll come to know God. If you can guard your eyes, guard your ears, 
You know, if you can guard your tongue from lying and from, you know, speaking ill of people behind their backs, uh, from cursing, from even raising your voice. So we have, you know, descriptions of the Prophet Muhammad as far as his disposition goes. And all of the hadith say that the Prophet did not even raise his voice, that he was an uh, easygoing personality, right? Um, that he said, the best of you are those who are best to their family members. He said that he is not from us who doesn't honor the elderly and have mercy on our young. Right? He said, none of you will enter paradise until you truly believe, and none of you will truly believe until you love one another. And then he said, shall I tell you of something that will increase your love? And they said, yes. And he said, spread peace amongst yourselves. So, uh, this is the main sort of focus or point of the fast, is to really um, transcend the physical and also to empathize, right, with those who are less fortunate, right, to experience something of what they're experiencing for the sake of increasing our concern for them. Because the more empathy one has, the more compassion one has. And the more compassion one has, the more godlike, as it were, or more angelic they are. Right? Jesus is actually quoted in the Quran as saying, Kunu Rabbani Deen, which is obviously in Arabic. But he said, Be lordly, be like God. Right? You know, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, in the language of Matthew. What does it mean to be like God? It means to appropriate, if you will, divine qualities at a human level. None of us can be God, right? Uh, despite what some world leaders think, um, <laughs> or perceive themselves, we're not gonna name drop. But to be divine, with a lowercase d, is to uh, assimilate qualities of God, such as mercy and compassion, right? And this is accomplished through these pillars of Islam, through prayer, through charity, through pilgrimage, and especially through fasting. The Prophet said in a hadith, quoting God, he said, all of the actions of the sons and daughters of Adam are for him, except fasting, for indeed that is mine. And the exigence, they say, what this means is, no one knows that you're fasting. When you pray, people can see you pray. When you go to pilgrimage, people can see you in your garb and you're making your circumambulations and so on and so forth. When you're giving charity, people can see that. When you're fasting, no one knows except God. So the prophet said, God says, uh, fasting is for me and I will reward him for that um, up to uh, ad, ad infinitum. So fa fasting has a very uh, uh, honored place amongst the practices of a Muslim. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> if there's time for a, a few questions, I can. If not, I'll just go sit down. What do you think? Why don't we let the other two speak, oh. and then we can have questions? Sure. That's all. That's all. Thank you. Thank you.